I'm so thrilled to be here. It's my first time in the uh, State of Map conference and together with uh, DevSeed. So um, I'm going to introduce with DevSeed also uh, the rural accessibility platform we developed for uh, indicator uh, evaluation for our projects. So uh, this is where the story starts. This is a rural, very rural area in China. And it's a very small town. It's the most poor uh, county in China. And then we went there, we see this amazing landsca uh, landscape, but the roads there are like this. This is not hiking roads. This is, it, it looks like hiking roads in the United States, but it's the rural roads in China that people use every day to their daily needs. And we went to the site visit, and then um, one of the roads is just like six miles. We drove in a car, and then it took us one hour because it's too bumpy. So uh, we work with local government, and um, we uh, proposed uh, over 1,000 roads to, uh, to have a loan with us. So we provide $200 million loan to them to upgrade the existing rural roads to increase the accessibility. So for every, road, uh, for every project that World Bank finance, we have indicator to track the results and to evaluate how the projects impact people's life there. So how can we uh, evaluate the impact of the accessibility if we upgrade the roads in the county? Usually, traditionally, for all the rural road projects in, in, uh, financed by the World Bank, we have the indicator saying uh, how many population are recovered within a two kilometer uh, zone um, along the road we are, uh, we are supporting. So basically, we draw a two kilometer buffer along the roads, and then we count how many people are covered in this buffer, road, buffer zone. However, this means that um, if a road like this, it is covered, uh, the, the people are covered by the two kilometer buffer zone, but they, it, is, it is not connecting them to anywhere. This is not a road sponsored by us, <laughs> by the way. So, um, so we are thinking actually, um, the, the, the real accessibility is that, is that we sponsoring, uh, we supporting the, those roads and then the roads can connect people to real needs like hospitals, like schools, like banks, like uh, markets. Um, also, especially we, uh, we are concerning about the gender issue, like the women can access the maternity center to do their routine checks during their pregnancy. So that comes this um, cool platform that we worked with DevSeed to uh, evaluate the accessibility to these uh, resources. So the indicator converted into how many population can access the resources, the nearest resources, within certain of certain amount of travel time, say 30 minutes, say 60 minutes. So, um, but the client we are working with, their resource constraint, this kind of like analysis, which requ requests routing shortest path and all the data intensive uh, input, they might not be able to do it with their own capacity and their own, um, uh, resources, the financial resources. So we're thinking we, we can develop something for them to use, which is interface friendly, which is low cost. So that means we need something open source and also based on open, open street map that can do the routing uh, based on uh, open, open data and open street map. So um, that's the story that we come to this uh, platform, uh, work with uh, DevSeed, and also we trained our uh, counterparts in China to, to, to use this platform so that in the future they can evaluate the impact of the project by their own. And then there are other uh, use cases for this platform is that one is that we, uh, we can evaluate the impact of a network upgrading uh, for the rural roads. What is the um, improvement of the network level uh, accessibility? The second one is we can prioritize their list of the potential road upgrade projects. Say this road can improve the accessibility to this extent, and then we can rank them, and then say, this is the priority in our portfolio. And then the third one is, we have a lot of country suffering from natural disasters, so we can 
uh, identify the roads in these disaster zones and then say, if this, uh, if this road is impacted by the natural disaster for, say, three months, including all the re reconstruction procedure, what is the impact of the accessibility to the people in the area? So uh, this is the story, and then uh, I'll hand, hand it over to Olaf to introduce this cool platform. So the rural accessibility map. So um, um, we started working with the World Bank around eight months ago, uh, building on a prototype that was already built by uh, Stephen and Bruno at the World Bank, and um, really be able to scale it up. Um, the rural accessibility map uses OSRM um, uh, under the hood to do routing, and that's what really allows us to go from that draw a two kilometer buffer around the road to do much more advanced analysis. Um, it allows us to take uh, road condition into account, it allows us to take surface type into account because it matters if you're driving along a goat path or if you're driving on a highway. Um, RAM also relies heavily on OpenStreetMap, uh, both its software and uh, the data, and this is what makes it uh, very easy for people to work with. Data acquisition, um, getting good road network data is still tricky, and for a lot of places, uh, OpenStreetMap is a great data source. So being able to provide the counterparts that the World Bank works with easy ways to get road network data and get easy, um, uh, easy ways to get uh, POI data uh, is, uh, is, is, is really massive. Um, so, what does uh, REM need to do the analysis? First, it needs population data. Uh, so, what we're doing is origin destination uh, analysis. And um, the origins, uh, in this case, are, um, so, uh, are, are population uh, estimates. Um, here, you see uh, uh, some points on the, on, the, on the right side. I pulled the uh, population estimates for Boulder County. These are census block level population estimates, um, but in World Bank projects, we sometimes use villages with population counts or world pop, um, and these are points. So beyond the population, uh, we need POI data, and this can be anything that you want to measure uh, accessibility in relation to. Uh, hospitals, schools, markets, um, whatever you want to, want to give to the platform, the platform is agnostic, as long as it's a point. Um, and um, uh, uh, REM has easy ways to sort of fetch that automatically from, from uh, OSM, or you can provide your own, um, your own data. And then it needs a road network. Um, road network, again, uh, can be pulled from OSM for, um, for, for smaller areas, or you can bring your own uh, road network data. The important thing is that the road network is, uh, is routable. This is um, one of the most important uh, I think, uh, prerequisites for the, for the road network to be able to do this analysis. Um, and then finally, the administrative boundaries. These are sort of the units of analysis. Uh, later on, I'll show a little bit uh, how that actually works. But um, in the end, uh, what really matters, you want to be able to measure accessibility and be able to compare it. So county, uh, between counties or between provinces, districts. Um, in this case, I pulled, in, in, the, in the example I'll show you in a bit, I pulled, um, I think, com, uh, commissionary districts here for in, in, in Boulder County. Um, oh, and finally, um, uh, the platform needs uh, an OSRM uh, profile. In this case, I, I show a, a, little, uh, a little excerpt of, of what's in that profile. Uh, most importantly, I think, in our case, are the sort of the speed uh, profiles and this really allows you to adapt it to local context. In this case, it's uh, it's for an OSM uh, data set, so you'll you'll see primary uh, primary highway, secondary, etc. But if you do have a, a data set that that has a very different uh, classification, you can you can adapt that and, and, and use it as well. Um, so this is the interface. This is the upload interface that we built. Um, by the way, you can run uh, uh, RAM uh, locally on your computer. It's all dockerized or, uh, it's, it's, uh, or in the cloud. Um, and um, so I uploaded, so in a little bit I'll show you um, how we're running analysis. Uh, I uploaded data for, for Boulder and um, the POIs that I used are microbreweries. So accessibility of Boulder County in relation to the microbreweries that are on OSM. Um, 
And this is what the, the, um, what the results are. Um, so what you'll see here on the map, the colors, each of the, pop, uh, each of the origins, so each of these census block level points are, um, are visualized on the map with their travel time. Um, you can see um, th there are four gray markers. Those are the four microbreweries that were, uh, that were tagged uh, 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 for Boulder County. Um, and, and this gives you a, a quick, a quick uh, overview of, uh, of accessibility in, in relation to breweries. Some of the other cool things that we can do is um, you can give, so each of these points can have multiple population estimates against it. Um, so if you, wanna, if you want to measure the accessibility of particular socioeconomic, um, you know, if, if you, of, of the poor in relation to hospitals, or you want to do um, uh, female population in, in, in relation to maternal health clinics, in relation to uh, uh, the male population, you can do that. Um, another thing is that the, the, there's a network, a little network button there grayed out um, for smaller road networks. You can actually um, import road network data and then edit the road network data to run scenarios. And, and that's, what, that's what's really cool because this in itself is nice, but you'll want to, if you want to uh, measure the impact of a road upgrade program, you want to run scenarios and, and sort of see the difference. Um, and, and that network, so uh, it, it will load an ID editor. You'll be able to drill down uh, to your road network and, for example, upgrade uh, your roads. Um, what we also do then is um, you see here the second table, percentage of po population with access to micro microbreweries. Um, four, five, and six, those are the commissionary districts. Usually there are nicer names to them. Um, but um, yeah, so, so usually it, it will say a province and it will say 80% of the population in this province has access to a hospital within 10 minutes. Um, but again, uh, what makes this really interesting are our scenarios. So um, what I did in this case, um, I um, took the road network and made Boulder a, a, a living street. So uh, living streets, I think, are in our speed profile are set to maximum 10 to 15 kilometers an hour. Uh, so here you can see that if Boulder could only drive at 10 or 15 kilometers an hour, what would the impact be on accessibility? Um, this is the result. And then if you compare it, this to the baseline that we ran, um, this is sort of the, the this is the, the result that you'll, you'll get. Uh, you, here you'll see the, the impact that um, in, in relation to the baseline, um, it, it, it takes 30, 30 minutes longer to get to your POIs in, in some areas. Um, so, um, next, so next up, um, RM is an open source tool. Um, we'd love to get more people involved, more people use it, more use cases. Um, we'd love to be able to uh, bring in other data sets, for example, flood masks, right? Be able to uh, bring in a flood mask and sort of do an automatic intersection on your road network and see the impact uh, of that on accessibility. Um, more powerful analysis. Right now, we don't take volume into account, for example, but, uh, but we could. Uh, other types of analysis, critical link. Right now, the only thing that uh, OSR, oh, so, so the only thing that REM returns are, are travel times, uh, but we could actually um, analyze the links itself and, and the criticality of each of these links. Um, and then um, an improved pipeline to get data from OSM. That's, uh, that's a major one on our, on our wish list. Right now we rely on overpass, which um, for bigger areas doesn't really work very well and is a little bit unstable. So uh, we'd love to be able to get a, a better pipeline there. Um, and this is one, this is, a, this is analysis that we did for Laos that I just put in because I think it's a nice picture. Uh, this is uh, the accessibility to education facilities uh, near Vientiane, the capital of Laos, and uh, um, this is this is all based on OSM data. And um, yeah, I, th I thought it was a, a, a nice analysis uh, to wrap up with. Um, anyway, if you want to know more about the project, rural access to info, we have also a description on our website. Uh, please go and check it out. And if you want to know more about this, we'll we'll be around both me and and Lee. So, thanks.
two or three questions. Um, so I'm curious um, if you have any like a way to tell a confidence interval that's built into your analysis because some areas have better data availability than others. And I just wonder if you were able to quantify that in your application as well. So uh, no, we don't, we don't have that yet within the application. Uh, we don't do that type of analysis yet, but we would, I think, would love to be able to do that. Yeah. Next. Anyone has questions? It looks like you're uh, attributing your uh, geometries to, you're giving them each representative points or centroids, and then you're attaching those to the network graph when you're determining accessibility. So I was curious for rural areas that don't have a lot of road network data, if you have a geometry that's distant from a road network, what's your threshold or how do you resolve uh, the absence of an edge to connect that centroid to the graph? So we'll take a walking speed into account okay. um, to the closest, and, and that's not perfect, right? We, we, we acknowledge it's not perfect, but, but yeah, we'll find the closest road and then, and then take a walking speed into account. Uh, but that is not perfect, right? Because the closest road can cross a river or a mountain. Or, yeah. I think we can we can take one more. Anyone? Uh, does does your model take into account different modes of transportation, uh, such as walking or like different roads will only be accessible by walking versus uh, automobile? Does that get used? So. Um, no, it doesn't handle multimodal, modal, but um, um, we can set speed. Uh, you can set speed limits on roads, right? Or so, in a certain way, yes. I mean, we, we, technically, we don't support multimodal, but if a particular road can only be, I mean, if if a, if a particular road can only be walked on, you can set it set its speed limit to five kilometers or whatever it is that you want to to set it to. Hi, um, I really like the pictures you had, but I couldn't quite make out the legend, and I didn't quite understand the the images you had, especially mm -hmm. the one at the end. I wonder if you could like narrate it for me. So this one, for yeah. example, yeah, okay. Um, so what you see here, all the colored dots are the origins. In these cases, are, are villages in in, in Laos. Um, the size of the bubble is population uh, size. So. Um, uh, we have quintiles, if you look there on the right side. So uh, population size, uh, population estimate determines the size of the point. And then the color is uh, time it takes to, to get to the nearest POI. Um, POIs are on the map with, um, yeah, are those POI markers, the gray POI markers. Um, yeah, so that, that's, does that answer your question? Okay. Great. Thank you, Olaf and Lee, and we'll bring on the next speaker. Okay.